Build your own FPV quad, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Bullshit. I don't want to spend time building anything. I just want to fly. Like many of you, I have a million different excuses as to why I wouldn't build my own FPV quad. And with buying and flies as good as this today, I haven't really been motivated to even give it a go. That is until today. In my last video of my FPV journey, flying that five inch for the first time has basically ruined FPV for me. I loved it. But I live in a city, so that means that every time I want to fly my five inch instead of my micros, I have to come all the way out of the city to somewhere like here in order to fly. And that just means that I can't fly this as much as I want to. But if I had something that was sub 250, smaller, lighter, and felt something like this, that would be pretty awesome. Also on top of that, I want it to be durable and have easy to replace arms because I still crash a lot. And if I can get a DJI 03 in that, even better because then I don't have to use a GoPro or an Insta360 camera because yes, I've broken quite a few of those already. Anyway, long story short, I couldn't find anything that had all of these things that I wanted that I could get off the shelf. And then I came across this video from Murders FPV who had built something that met everything that I was looking for. He even did a build video on this as well. And it didn't actually look that difficult. He is pretty much responsible for me going from, I just want to fly FPV to maybe I could build my own one. Almost all of the parts I've used in this video are the same as what Murders FPV used for his build. I will leave a link to Murders FPV's original video in the description below if you want that step-by-step -step follow along that I use in order to make this quad. So I ordered the frame, the flight stack, the motors, the DJI 03 three inch props and a crossfire receiver and antenna because unlike Murders FPV, I don't use tracer. Oh, and these pretty specific 6S batteries from GNB. However, trying to find some of these parts in Switzerland wasn't so easy. It's not like you can go to one place and they have everything. I even had to order things from different countries and that meant that getting these parts took a long time. It cost a lot in shipping. It took weeks to arrive. Some parts arrived before others, so I couldn't do the full build all in one go. The components that I use for this build aren't the cheapest that you can get, but they did make things very easy and they definitely keep everything below 250 grams. So the frame is really good quality and it was really easy to work with. Now I've got nothing to compare that to, but it was very straightforward to put together and it was extremely well thought out. When it comes to building a quad, soldering is the bit that everyone panics about. And I've already done repairs to my tiny quads, so actually with a bit of extra practice on these newbie drone practice boards for the bits that I'd never had to solder before, I actually found this quite easy. Now, don't look too closely at my soldering work because it's not the best, but it'll do for now. The frame comes with this antenna mount for the DJI 03. And yet yeah, it will do the job and I've seen other builds that use this, but this stubby mount is actually better. So I got one printed. To save some extra weight, I replaced the XT60 with this XT30. I replaced the Crossfire Immortal antenna with a mini mortal, which also has a smaller mount. So now the moment of truth, the quad was built and the all up weight came up to 244 grams. And that's awesome because that allowed me to add a few extras. I added protection on the chin and also these little protectors on the arm. And I also got some Flywoo NDE filters and lens protectors for the O3. So let's plug it in and see if it works. I'm, I'm joking, I, I did do a check on a Joshua Bardwell video and then uh, realized that actually it'd be better to order a smoke stopper and a multimeter and do a few checks before I plug this in. Okay, now I think we're ready to plug it in. What happens? Okay, something isn't working as the motors aren't making the right noise. A few moments later. So it was actually just because when I put the battery strap on, I managed to pull out a connector. And so with that back in, I plugged it in and I heard So that was the physical build of the quad. Now we have to do what I thought was actually the harder part, which was to configure this in BL Heli and Betaflight to make it all work. And I've played around with these before, but I've played around with this when quads have already been set up. So I'm just 
adjusting parameters or uh, making a few changes. I've never set up a quad from scratch. But after watching a few Joshua Bardwell videos and slapping a default Superfly 3 inch profile on there, putting my rates in, we should be good to go. So now it's time for the first flight. And although I built this so that I didn't have to leave the city and come out to a giant field, I am out of the city in a giant field because as it's the first flight, I wanna make sure that if something does happen, I'm not gonna hit anything. Um, so let's do a line of sight test. I'm terrible at line of sight flying. So let's give this a go and just hope that it's all good. And this is the point where the battery ran out in my microphone and I hadn't realized, but I got this to hover and it was extremely stable. It was very precise. I couldn't believe it. And then I just kind of blipped the throttle just to see what would happen and ended up having to disarm it before I took my own legs out. But I was kind of surprised. I remember shouting, I can't believe it flies. And then I do recall saying something like, I have built a flying machine. <laughs> So not only does this thing fly, but it flies really well. In fact, I've been flying this thing around for about two months now, and I was getting some weird twitch, which I managed to fix, and this was something to do with the O3 air unit, but it's fast when I want it to be, it's really responsive, and it's so much quieter and smaller than the five inch. But does it fly like a five inch? Well, not quite, but it's pretty close. It's close enough that I haven't really flown my five inch in a while. But this does give me hope for the sub 250 class. I mean, it's good. It's really good. Maybe I'm just blowing my own horn here because I built this, but it, it, it's pretty good. So what do you think in a future video? Maybe I should put this up against other sub 250 bind and fly drones and just see how they perform in comparison to this, because I get the feeling that maybe I enjoy this so much because I built it. That doesn't mean to say that actually it's any good. So let me know what I should compare this to the most popular ones in the comments. I will go out there and I will buy those quads and compare this to that in that future video. So the big question is, did this experience change my mind about building my own FPV quads? And I really hate to admit this and I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but I actually enjoyed that build process a lot. And I now have other quads that I'm gonna be building as well. I, I'm, I'm gonna be building at least another one of the F3s because that was such a cool thing. And you know, I wanna, I wanna have a spare, but I'm also gonna be building one of these, which is the Grinderino as well, also a sub 250. With that said, please check out Murder's FPV. I will leave a link to his channel below. I couldn't have done this build without him. And you know, thank you so much for putting me onto these frames. They are really, really cool. So thanks for watching. And if you haven't seen my FPV journey so far, I'm gonna leave a little playlist up here for you.